Boys and girls, welcome to my kitchen. This is my quarantine lab. I'm so glad you're here. Today, the topic is mixtures and solutions. Now, first of all, this is the lab I'm asking you to do, which I'd like you to do at home. But before you do this, I'd like you to do the mixtures lecture and the mixtures and solutions video. There's some vocabulary you're gonna need to know from that in order to complete this. So make sure you do that first. Once you are ready, you're gonna print out your data table for the lab. You don't, if you can't manage to print this out, you can certainly write this on a separate piece of paper. If you're having any issues with printing, that's always an option. All right, so as you have already seen in the mixtures lecture and in the video, there's different types of mixtures. They're not all considered the same and we have some terminology for them. We have homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. We've seen these prefixes before. So the prefix homo means same, Stop laughing, Corbin and Matthew. I know you know it's funny. Moving on. So homogeneous means it's the same. Heterogeneous means it's different. So I have two different examples of heterogeneous mixtures here, which my videographer is going to go in on. So the main idea with a heterogeneous mixture is it's not the same. It's not consistent throughout. If I were to take a spoonful of these sprinkles, I might get four yellow and two red in one. And then in the next one, I could have 10 yellow and no red. So a heterogeneous mixture, part of its definition is it's not consistently the same throughout. Now this is a more mixed heterogeneous mixture. This is actually taco seasoning, but even though it looks relatively the same, you can see there's different types of particles within it. So it is a heterogeneous mixture, but it's more mixed than the sprinkles. So heterogeneous, different. A solution is a homogeneous mixture, and we'll take a look at those in a second. So we're gonna start with part one. Part one, if you look at your paper, says salt and pepper solubility. So this is gonna be the first thing we're gonna take a look at. So I'm doing hopefully things that you've easily got at home. You can do this on your own. So I have some salt and some pepper. Hopefully you have that available. So your first step is to mix them up. So I'm gonna put some salt in a bowl and some pepper in a bowl. And I'm gonna mix the salt and pepper. And the first step is to see what kind of a mixture this is. So if you take the salt and pepper and you mix it up, you're going to have a different kind of a mixture. We mixed up salt and pepper. So the first question says, put that together, what type of a mixture is this? What is this when it's dry? Salt plus pepper, what kind of a mixture? Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? The next step, you're gonna take some of that salt and pepper mixture and you're gonna put it into a bowl and you're gonna add some water to the bowl. Just stay right there. So I'm gonna pour some water into my bowl. And you're gonna see things are gonna change a little bit. So when I mix this up, I can clearly see the water. I can clearly see one of the two things I started with, but the other one almost seems like it's disappeared. So the next question is, what type of mixture is this now? Is it the same or is it different? So your answer is going to be, is it a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture? And then within this, which of the substances is the solute and which is the solvent? So think back, you had to define this when you watched the mixtures and solutions video, which is the solute, the substance that is being dissolved, and which is the solvent, the substance that is doing the dissolving? Is there anything in here that's not a solute or a solvent? This leads to the next question, what can you say about the solubility of salt in water? So if you don't see it anymore, we would say it's highly soluble. It dissolved very easily. Then the question is, what can you say about the solubility of pepper in water? Is the pepper still visible or did it dissolve completely? If something doesn't dissolve well, we call that insoluble. So this is part one. Put your mixture of salt and pepper together, put it in a bowl with some water, and then answer those questions using the terminology from the lecture and from the video notes that you should have already done. All right, the second part, part two, hold on a second, let me get this out of the way. Part two is looking at sugar solubility. So I'm gonna clear these out of the way. And we're gonna look specifically at one type of chemical and how well it dissolves in, in this case, water as our solvent. So what you're gonna need are three clear glasses. 
You're going to need some sugar. You're going to need a one cup measuring cup and two spoons. So what we're looking at here is the effect of temperature on solubility. We talked about heat transfer and temperature in a previous unit. So we're going to apply that here and see, does temperature have an effect on how much of a particular solute can be dissolved in a specific solvent? All right. So if you take a look, step one on your paper says fill a cup with ice water. Now it does ask you to record temperatures here. I don't have thermometers at home. You probably don't have thermometers at home. I'm not worried about the actual temperature, but you're looking for cold, actually ice cold, room temperature and hot or very warm water. So I don't really care about the temperature being recorded, but that's what we're gonna be comparing. So the first thing we need is ice water. So I'm gonna put some ice into one of the empty cups. And then I'm gonna add one cup of tap water. So put some ice in your clear cup, get one cup of water. Here's my sink, ooh, very exciting. So I'm gonna add one cup of water to the ice. Come on back this way, videographer. And the first step is to see how many spoonfuls of sugar I can put into this ice water before the sugar no longer dissolves. So you're gonna need two spoons for this. You're going to need one spoon to take the sugar out of whatever container you're using and a second spoon to actually stir because you don't wanna put a wet spoon back into here. So you're gonna do this one spoonful at a time. I'm gonna take one spoonful, and I'm just using a regular teaspoon, add it to the sugar and then use the second one to mix it. And then the reason why you wanna do this in a clear glass is because you wanna be able to see, did the sugar dissolve or not? So if you take a look from the side, I can see there's still a lot of sugar in here that didn't dissolve. So I was only able to get one teaspoon of sugar dissolved in the ice water. So once you've done that, you're going to record on your paper how many spoonfuls were you able to dissolve in the ice water? Once again, ignore the temperature. We're not gonna be able to do that. Just record how many spoonfuls you got in the ice water. Then you're gonna do the same thing. It says empty the cup and rinse it out. You can do it with the same cup if you want. I'm gonna do three different ones just to make it faster. So the second time, you're going to do it with room temperature water. Now I already measured one cup of water into this. And so it's already at room temperature. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna add a spoonful of sugar and then stir it in and see how well it dissolves. So at this point, there might be a little bit still swirling, but it looks pretty well dissolved. So I'm gonna add a second spoonful and do it again. Now I'm not gonna show you this to the end because I want this to be your test. So what you're gonna do is keep adding one spoonful at a time, mixing it in, and when you get to a point where you see it start to fall out like it did in the ice water, you're done. This one looks pretty clear. We've still been able to dissolve. So I would add a third. So you keep on going with yours until you reach a point where no more sugar can dissolve in the water. The, that point, the definition of that point is called saturation. So once you reach saturation, you can't put any more sugar in. At that point, it's gonna fall out of solution. So right now what we have is a homogeneous mixture. We have a mixture of sugar and water where the sugar looks like it's dissolved, it's completely invisible, but it's still there. So this is a mixture. A solution is a type of mixture. We're gonna see this is different when we get to elements and compounds a little later. There's no chemical connection between the sugar and the water. We could easily separate them like you saw in the mixtures and uh, solutions video by boiling off the water and the solid sugar would be left behind. The last step is to do this once again, but you want the hottest water you can get. So I'm gonna let that warm up a bit till it gets as hot as possible. And then I'm gonna measure once again, hold on. I'm going to measure once again one cup of water. Now it's really important that you make the amount of water consistent. If we had a lot more or a lot less water in one of these cups, 
then we wouldn't have a consistent result. So we wouldn't know if the different number of spoonfuls of sugar are because we have more water or less water, or if it's truly related to the temperature. So we're gonna try that again. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna keep adding spoonfuls of sugar to the really hot water until you can't add any more, until you reach saturation. You've seen the procedure, so I'm not gonna do it again. But the idea is to see how many you can add. I'm gonna give you a little hint. You need a lot of sugar for this last one. So the object is to compare the difference in temperature with the solubility of sugar. And then you're gonna answer the question at the bottom. So once you've added this data here for part two, the number of spoonfuls in room temperature water, the number of spoonfuls in warm or hot water, you're gonna answer this question. Based on your observations, what can you say about the solubility of sugar in different temperatures of water? Does the number change when it's hotter or colder or does it remain the same? So we're looking at some simple ways to demonstrate homogeneous mixtures when we're making a solution. Heterogeneous mixtures, this is not a solution, does not have the same properties. If we pick a sample from different parts, if I take a sample from this, it's gonna look the same wherever I take it from, as opposed to what you saw earlier with the sprinkles and the taco seasoning. So, hope this is something you have all the materials to do at home. Have fun with it. Once again, you please put your information on the data table. If you don't have the data table, writing it on a separate sheet of paper is fine. And then submit that as a file upload to me on Canvas. Happy mixing!